Welcome to the KTA Failure Analysis Video Training Series. This is part five of a six-part series that describes the field and laboratory techniques used to determine why there was intercoat delamination of a coating system applied to a concrete floor. Each part is standalone, but when viewed in order, they present the key findings from an actual project. When examining coating problems on concrete floors, one of the key tests that is often performed is a microscopic examination of the coating and the removal of samples for laboratory analysis. A low power microscope with 20 to 50 X magnification helps the investigator to identify flaws or deficiencies that would otherwise go undetected. Microscopic analysis also helps focus the direction of the investigation and identify the types of samples that should be collected for laboratory analysis. A microscope with a large field of view is a plus, especially one that has an opening that will allow for a knife to be used to probe the surface while viewing under the microscope. In this case, the microscopic analysis confirmed that the problem was occurring in the outer surface of the tan coat. This separation caused the clear coat to have a milky appearance. Contamination between coats was not visible. The removal of samples must be done methodically and with planning, and consider the following. The samples need to be representative of the problems that you're observing. Oftentimes, the failure is not the same across an entire surface. For example, the failure of a coating system to the substrate must be treated differently than a failure between coats. In the end, the cause may be the same, but when conducting field analysis and sampling, they must be treated as if they are two separate problems. So if more than one type of failure is occurring, representative samples of each type must be collected. Also take representative samples in non-failing areas. Non-failing samples are as important as failing, so the comparisons can be made between what is working and what isn't working. The failing sample should be cleaned and removed by the investigator so the location and history is known. Chips from the ground are contaminated and there's no personal knowledge of the source. Peeling paint still attached to the surface can also be contaminated. When possible, collect a sample in a failing area where the paint is still attached so the disbonding interface has been protected from environmental contamination. Sample both the failing coating and the coating material or the substrate that remains behind. Frequently, key evidence in determining the, the cause of a failure remains on the surface, so it must be sampled also. Samples should include the complete system and substrate whenever possible so that the laboratory can separate the coats and look at the interface rather than dealing with scrapings of the coats. This can be accomplished by taking a core or chip of concrete with the coatings attached, or in the case of steel when authorized, by cutting a corner from a member or removing something like a small bracket if it has the same painting history. Prepare a chain of custody for the samples with the type and location of the sample and the type of analysis required. The laboratory should acknowledge receipt of the samples to close that loop. Here the removal of samples is being demonstrated. First, a blister cap in a failing area is removed. What I want to do now is <clears throat> try to use a small exacto razor knife or a regular standard uh, razor knife and I'm going to try to just e extract that blister cap. Sample 2 uh, today's date and I'm going to label this a blister cap it's about a foot and a half from the door and about two and a half feet from the corner I'm going to take my exacto knife because this blister is small I'm not going to use the bigger knife and I'm just going to use the exacto knife to kind of come cut around the blister cap itself and you can see it lifted you want to take your time and be careful because you want to get the cap intact 
So there I'm cutting around. And you can see that I'm able to lift the blister cap now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sample. I'm going to put it directly into my sample bag and seal it. Take my label from the floor showing that this is sample two and put it right on my bag. The next thing I'll do is I'll put something there to designate where my blister was and I'll put my samples in the picture and I'll take a picture of all that together for documentation purposes. Next, the coating system remaining on the floor beneath the cap is removed. I'm interested in what is beneath that blister cap. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to relabel my sample. Obviously, this will be sample three. This sample is actually going to be the, the coating system beneath the blister. So I'm going to label it coating beneath blister cap. I'm going to take a little bit heavier bladed knife. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score the coating system around it. I'm just going to score it in a rectangular shape around the blister cap. And then what I'm going to try to do is keep cutting one side to undercut the coating film to remove the film intact. See, all I'm doing is just making a series of shortcuts in the coating system underneath. So there we go. So we have the sample there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to photograph that while that sample is still there as sample three. Next, we see the removal of the total system in a failing area with the samples placed in a sealed septum vial to retain any solvents that might be present in the system. When samples are placed in bags, even though they are sealed, solvents can escape. What we have here is we have a blistered area on a coating system and we want to sample the coating system in the blistered area. We suspect that maybe there's some solvent entrapped in one of those coating layers below. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sample using a sharp chisel and immediately when we cut our sample out we're going to put it into this septum capped vial. So in order to keep our sample from flying all over the place when we cut it, what I like to do is put a piece of plastic down on the surface and then just loosely tape the edges and again all that does is keep my sample from flying to the end of the room. So now what we can do is we can take our sample in the area that we want to right through our plastic. So what I'm going to do is take the chisel and hold it at a slight angle so I can cut through the coating and make sure that I've cut through the system. the other side of my sample area. Repeat that. You can see that my sample is already breaking away from the surface so what I can do then is just remove my piece. Just use a razor knife to disbond it the rest of the way. We've got our sample of our coating system from the floor. What we're going to do then is take that sample and right away put it into the septum cap vial.
put our cap on the valve. Now we have a sample of the toting, total coating system that we can use and it's in a sealed area that if there is any retained solvents in the sample, we can do laboratory testing to detect that. Finally, here's an example of removal of the total system in a blistered area with the concrete attached. This is an approach that can be used without cutting deeply into the concrete to take a core. In all cases, document the locations of the samples, what the samples represent, and take photographs. That's it for part five. Log on to ktuniversity.com to see other videos in this series for the collection of background information, other types of hands-on testing used to examine the problem, and the laboratory analysis that was undertaken to determine the cause. While on the site, you'll find a listing of other instructional videos that are available for your viewing.